Debate exists over whether the top part of the implant should be textured or smooth. Implant Direct, after I retired as president, launched the Legacy P implant with a smooth neck. But if you already have 100% success with SBM extended to the top of the implant and a documented bone loss of only 0.64 millimeters after five years, why look for something different? We know that bone tends to run down a smooth surface. As shown here, Nobel offers all different kinds of variations to the necks of its implants. With the Legacy implant having a very high documented success rate with very little bone loss, I firmly believe in extending its SBM textured surface to the top of the implant. This is a case done with the Legacy P implant launched after I retired and against my advice. In 1994, I developed what was called selective surface with a smooth surface on the top, smooth on the bottom for more efficient self-tapping, and SBM blasted surface in the middle. I've looked at all of these combinations and went with light blasted SBM surface over the entire length of the implant. Blasting with aluminous oxide like Strauman and titanium oxide like Astra requires a final wash with acid to remove the embedded particles. With SBM, which is water-soluble HA crystals, this additional procedure, which tends to round the threads and cutting grooves, is not necessary. Here is a study by Dr. Danny Boozer comparing Strauman's tissue-level implants blasted all the way to the top with the same implants having the top two millimeters smooth. As reported in this study, quote, in general, implants placed with the top of the SLA surface above the bone crest had significantly less bone loss than implants with the top of the SLA textured surface level with the bone, end of quote. This indicates that a textured surface in the soft tissue does not contribute to bone loss.